Hello and welcome to the 22nd running of the Birel Prague Grand Prix 10 kilometers road race through the streets of one of the most beautiful capital cities in Europe. This event is part of the Run Check series of seven races a year, all of which hold the prestigious IAAF gold label. We've had some celebrated men's winners in the 10K in the past, Paul Turgat, Antonio Pinto, Haile Gebre Selassie, but tonight is the women's race which promises to be the pièce de résistance. I'm joined this evening by Jim Moberly, whose wife Jana, a former international runner herself, is now the elite race recruiter. And she's put together a terrific field, Jim. Yeah, the women, as you said, this is a women's specialty tonight. We have three of the fastest women in the world at the, uh, at the 10K distance. Actually, this year they are the three fastest in the world. We have the world record holder, Jocelyn Chepko's guy, who will be wearing number two. She ran 30.04 on her way to a world record in the half marathon in Prague in April. Then we have Viola. In fact, in fact Jim, she set four world records in one race. She, she did. <laughs> It was, it was an unbelievable experience for those of us watching it. And uh, she ran uh, 10, 15, 20, and the half marathon, 104.52. Then we have Viola Chepchumba, who is, uh, was second in that race in 105.22, which just an extraordinarily good time. Viola has run 30.05 in that race, so she is now the second fastest woman in history. And the third one, and a bit of a, a wild card in the race, is Fancy Kemotai, who ran 30.23 in the Netherlands this year and actually finished third in that half marathon. So, you know, th that women's field is loaded. Man. And, of course, uh, Chep Chumber is the uh, defending champion. She is. And she defeated Jocelyn last year in this very race. So that's one, one victory apiece uh, for each of them, so to speak. But I suppose with four world records in one race, you've got to think that uh, Joycelyn is uh, yeah, maybe a marginal favorite for this one. Yeah, I was, I was concerned that this was you know, late in the season and they may be raced out. But both of them have not raced much since that a April race. So hopefully they'll be fresh enough to really turn it on. Okay, well, we've, uh, we've had a brief look at the men on the start line there, and this is, this is a pretty good field. We've also got the defending champion here wearing number one. The women, of course, have the F numbers, uh, F1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, just jogging towards the camera was last year's winner, Viola Chepchumba. Uh, anyway, Abraham Kipiatic of, uh, of Kenya, he's the defending champion. He ran 27.40 last year. Now, the course record set by Jeffrey Rono three years ago is 27.28. Anyway, up against him is Jamal, right in the middle of your screen there, Jamal Mekanen. Now, he ran fifth in the World Championship 10,000 meters on the track at the World Champs in London just a month ago, but he did 26.56.11. So he's a sub 27 minute man, that's to say, Although it was on the track, you know, with a lot of people running very, very quickly, he's run at least half a minute faster than most of the guys uh, in here. Now, Kenta, the Japanese guy, is a, uh, is a colleague of Abraham Kipjatic, because last year's men's winner has uh, emigrated, so to speak, to train in Japan, and he's joined one of the leading Japanese corporate teams out there. And two of his uh, teammates, one of whom was Kenta, who you saw there, and uh, the other one is uh, Yorui Zaka. Uh, he's going to be in there wearing uh, number five. Uh, now, both Japanese guys are sub-28 minute 10K, 10,000 meters runners on the track. We usually make the distinction between uh, track as uh, saying 10,000 meters and road being 10K. But there's a bunch of other guys in there too, particularly uh, two other Kenyans, both named Kimeli, no relation. Bernard Camilli and Matthew Camilli wearing three and four. So a very good race all, uh, all ways up. And Paolo, you can see there, Brazilian. He finished third in one of the run check uh, half marathons at uh, Ceska Budjavica about two months ago. That was a really torrid night. Now the favorites all just disintegrated in the heat and Paolo Paolo came through 
in the final stages and, uh, and took third place there. So a lot of people, Jim, have run, run check races in the past. And you see the guys with the blue vest, they're actually part of the run check racing team. And that is the, uh, the, the rest of the uh, popular field behind. About 9,000 runners all together here tonight. It's going to be a, a good evening. The w weather conditions are good. Should be about 19 degrees when we get going here. There doesn't seem to be any wind to speak of. It's in the dark, so you don't have direct sunlight. And, uh, you know, we couldn't ask for much better conditions. I think if, if there's any records to be broken tonight, there's no excuses as to why it doesn't happen. <laughs> Well, the women are looking at, well, as Jim said earlier, the world record for the 10K was set here in April during a half marathon, would you believe? And it is 30.04. And, uh, and that was to um, uh, Jeb Koske, uh, who finished second in this race last year. Uh, but uh, Jeb Jumba, who did 30.05, is the race winner. So we've got two really fast women and uh, it's, it's pretty simple, Jim, three, uh, three minutes per kilometer. Yeah, and that's their, that's their chosen pace. That's what they've asked the pacemakers to go at. Although with Jocelyn and Viola, they will just run their race. We saw that in Prague in April. We saw it last year with Viola. They don't pay a lot of attention. Uh, just looking at the, uh, the course, uh, we're in Republic Square at the moment, and in fact that's where we're doing our commentary. Uh, we head to the river over the Vltava uh, and go west, do that loop, come right back to Malostranska, uh, still on the other side of the river, back to the bridge, and a 900 meter sprint back into Republic Square. And uh, well, we hope both men and women are going to get here before 8 o'clock this evening. There's a look at the uh, the men's field, one to 11. Defending champion wearing number one, fastest man in the field wearing number two. But basically, any of those uh, first six guys could be coming home a winner. Our, our top uh, check man is probably uh, Yuji Homolach. He'll be challenged by Vit Pavlista, and they're both hoping to to beat the women in this race. Well, if you look at, uh, talking about the Czechs in here, F8, Eva Vrabsova, uh, she's really interesting. She was twice an Olympic cross-country skier. Uh, she's only 31 years old now, and in fact was 14th in the World Championships Marathon in London a month ago in uh, a sub-230 time. Uh, she was the second European, so a, uh, a very successful uh, world uh, Championship cross-country skier who's become a very successful World Championship runner. She There's last year's winner, Viola, we just seen her. And Joyceline was at the end of that line there, the pretender to the title. Uh, to get back to Eva for just a second, she finished sixth in uh, cross-country skiing in the Olympics, so she is no slouch in either discipline. <laughs> She said yesterday at the press conference that uh, she was glad that she was skiing first. She said because it's easier on the legs. You're not pounding, obviously. You're sliding across the snow. So she switched to running a half a dozen years ago. I mean, she did it as part of her training, then realized that she was pretty good at that too. We're about a minute away from the start. Well, temperature's a bit warmer than, uh, than we thought, Jim. 21, that's uh -huh. around about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's still, and at yeah, 10K, it's not going to be that mayor. significant. The mayor with the gun up. Race director Vasek Skrivanek.
Well, Jim mentioned the lady mayor there firing the pistol. She's actually already run the popular five kilometers race for women. That's a sort of introductory race for beginners, which went off at six o'clock this evening, so about 90 minutes ago. One in uh, quite a decent time, about uh, or just under 19 minutes. Uh, but the mayor, a regular runner herself, uh, she was at the press conference too yesterday, wishing everybody the best. So uh, she knows what it's all about. Yeah, and they're they're planning to do some training centers here in Prague. Hopefully that will happen. It's always a question of budgets, as we know. But uh, that would be great. They want to do training centers for several sports, including one for athletics and indoor track, etc. Okay, well, we shall be picking up the leading men uh, fairly soon. Now, they're looking, or rather, Kipjatic, last year's winner, did 27.40, as we said. He said he's looking for 27.10 tonight, but there's going to be a pace for about 27 minutes. What sort of time are we uh, looking at per kilometre, Jim? 27 minutes would be 2.42, uh, so anything around that would uh, keep them in the ballpark. 2.42, 2.44. Four would be 27.20. And as we said, number two, Jamal Mekinen of Ethiopia, who finished fifth in the World Championships, uh, 10,000 meters in London, uh, behind uh, Britain's Mo Farah. He also finished fourth in the World Cross Country earlier this year in Kampala. Now I'd say he's probably a marginal favorite, despite the number of Kenyans we've got in the race. He's run 26.56. He's the only guy under 27 minutes whether on the track or on the roads. We'll see. But then uh, Matthew Camelli, you mentioned the two Camellis. Matthew finished second to Mo Farah in Ostrava <laughs> on the five and 10,000 at 27.14. So he's not too far behind. Him. Well, we've got a couple of guys just over uh, 27 minutes. Last year's champion right in the middle of that pack. He's lying about fourth at the moment with Abraham on his front. They're the uh, 9,000 uh, contenders. Still jockeying their way through Republic Square and the start line. Starting and finishing in Old Town, of course, is always a bit problematic in that we don't have wide highways. So I suppose something like 10,000 is pretty much going to be the limit for, I would uh, for think this so. race. Anyway, it's built up over the years. This is the second oldest event on the run check calendar. The uh, marathon was first, both started in 1995. So the 22nd edition. Now we've got a couple of pacemakers out there. You can see the sort of times that they're uh, aiming for. So we've got two pacemakers in the men's race and three pacemakers in the women's race. And as Jim was telling you uh, earlier about those favorites, as far as a, uh, a world record or a world best goes, the women are going to be our best bet uh, tonight. But we are hoping for the men to break the, the race record, to get close to 27. Well, a reminder of that race record, it's three years old and it's 27 minutes and 28 seconds. Coming off the Stevanka Bridge and heading west now, they're going into a loop of about five or six K before they uh, head east to Malastranska and then back to the bridge. These runners are just passing one kilometer, so they're, uh, they're on their way. Well, both men and women are well into their second kilometer now. Whatever we can, we'll, uh, we'll give you the times and uh, tell you how they're faring against the course record. Up on the, uh, the left there, that goes up to uh, one, of the, uh, one of the big parks in central Prague. Absolutely sensational for running in. At the end of that, uh, of that park, Latenska, is the uh, Ravchani Castle. So the famous castle that uh, stands astride the uh, old town is at the end of the, uh, the road that is actually behind them. Anyway, group of, uh, well, a good, good dozen men in there at the moment. Pacemakers leading out last year's winner. One of two times that they will run under the bridges and uh, head back up a little bit of a slope. But other than that, there's really no hills on this course. There's the mayor cheering them on.
lot of run check best in that. So five minutes and they still haven't cleared the bridge, some of the back markers. Or rather, Republic Square. So a group of a, uh, a dozen men. There's one Brazilian right in the middle there. I think I can see uh, one of the Czech runners. There's one of the uh, Ukraine runners in there too. But it's uh, mostly Kenyans with a couple of Ethiopians and a Moroccan and a Moroccan-born Frenchman in there at the moment. There's about 12 to 15 people in this league group as they are probably you know, close to 2K there. I think that's... Uh, ah, there's Joyce Lynn. Is she by herself already? She's really aggressive, isn't she? She is. They, they Actually, so is Viola. <laughs> well, she's already looking I at her I don't know watch. what... <laughs> She's near two kilometers. Well, they, she must have been approaching 2K there. We can't see the marker, unfortunately, but uh, we'll keep you updated as much as we can. There's her world record set in that half marathon in Prague back in April. That's her husband who's pacing her, I believe. No, it's not. I'll, I'll take that back. It's not her husband. It's Viola's husband who's facing her. I yeah, in fact, Joyce Lean said her own husband, who was a national ranked runner in Kenya, but not a very well known international, Nicholas Koech, she said that he was the inspiration for her beginning running. You got a brief look at race director Carlo Capalbo there, taking congratulations back on the start line. One of the charities that uh, support the race and are supported by the race. We run so others can who cannot run. Or others who cannot. So they're still heading out to the uh, famous, world famous Montana River. But these guys are at least two kilometers past the, uh, the bridge. And the women are over 2K uh, too. In, as you can see, that uh, that's one of the Japanese uh, runners. He's a 27-minute uh, runner on one the track. One, one of the men's, uh, <laughs> yeah, Japanese men's runners, and they often have difficulty keeping up with the women. This could be a magnificent run or a crash and burn. It's it's hard to judge on a situation like well, that. Well, sure. I mean, if they go out too fast, um, I mean, the worst thing that uh, that could happen is uh, just hitting hitting the wall. So at 5:54 for two kilometers, she is under 29:40 pace. That's, that's terrific. It is, but it's a little scary, don't you think? Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I asked her yesterday at the press conference what she thought about the fact that several women have run under 29 minutes on the track, right. but nobody's done it on the road. And she says she didn't see any reason why not. Well, she's young, you know, and she's brave, and she's strong, so... Well, there's certainly no sign at the moment of last year's winner, Viola Jepchumba, you know, contesting the head of the race with her. No, but she may be running a more conservative, obviously more conservative, but she may be running a, a more uh, sane pace, if you will. Well, I mean, she knows that if she runs three minutes per kilometer, you know, she's going to get a personal best, and it's also going to beat the previous world record. Now, as, as to whether Joyce Lynn is going to keep it going and get substantially under uh, 30 minutes, we've, uh, we've yet to see. But she's well into her fourth K now. You know, having done well under six minutes for, uh, for 2K, I would venture that she's done pretty well so far. I mean, that's, that's just the pace. That's not the actual times that, uh, that uh, Joyce Lynn uh, Jepkoska is doing. 24 years old, by the way. She's, uh, she's got a son named Rooney. And she really burst on the scene last year. She's not been, you know, she doesn't have tired legs from too many poundings. But that looks, that looks like a track run to me. Well, she's certainly at close to 100 meters 
ahead already of the women's chasing pack. Great view of the castle there, and the bridge with the Vltava River, and the park up in the uh, background, and the old town in the background there. Nice twilight scene. Well, this is pretty hot up front. This is, uh, this is Matthew Kimeli on the uh, far left, just as can Gogo, who's placed highly in run check races in the past. That's Bernard uh, Kimeli right in the center there. And a couple of pacemakers over on the left. In fact, <laughs> these three guys are clearly not satisfied with the pacemakers. They're, uh, they're right up at, uh, beside them. It looks like the pacemakers are trying to hold on to them. Well, I can't see uh, any sign of the ultra-rapid uh, track runner from Ethiopia, Jamal McConnan. Uh, it's, it's all Kenya at the moment. And remember, the, uh, the two guys to the right of your screen are pacemakers, so they will be dropping out at some point. In fact, I believe the, uh, the, the one uh, men's pacemaker, uh, Robert and Way, is going uh, to run to 4K. And then Abel Kipchumba is going to run to 7K. So the last 3K, the, uh, the guys are going to be on their own. They've already lost one pacemaker. He's behind this group. Yeah, back in fifth place. And in fact, uh, Abel is... 10.54 uh, for 4K. They're on 27. They're under, just under 27.20 pace. Terrific. Which is course record pace. 27.28. Jeffrey Rono 2014 and that was a breakthrough year for Rono because he had uh, he had won surprisingly the Olomots half marathon uh, about a month or six weeks previously and in doing so had, uh, had beaten a guy who he'd been brought here to pace former marathon world record holder Wilson Kipsang. Kipsang could only finish second that uh, that day Jeffrey Rono was invited to run this uh, uh, Birel Grand Prix and he won that as well, 27-40. No, 27-28, course record. And he defeated Jeffrey Mutai, who's a, a very fast marathoner in that race. So he, he beat some very good, talented runners. He beat Dennis Cometo also. Well, look at this. You, you cannot see anybody behind. That's, well, the group no, is there. No, there's a group yeah, there. 150 meters at least, probably. At least, I would say. But well, we can hope to uh, give you shortly some sort of time for Jocelyn at, uh, at 4K. They took the men at 4, hopefully it will take the, uh, the women too. TV trucks, security bikes. Well, the men are doing their, doing their job. We're certainly making, uh, making it a fast evening all round. Just as Kango go to the left of the screen, hanging in there. Very good uh, half marathon. Bernard and Matthew, the Kameli, Kamelis, yes. are both in the lead right now. And everybody in these blue vests, uh, incidentally, 5K, 1335, so that's exactly 2710. 10, super, super fun. The, the blue vests, uh, there is something called the Run Check Racing Team. So these guys, although they're not based here they, uh, during, the, uh, during the winter training season, they do come here during the summer, stay in Prague, and uh, use it as a jumping off spot for their races throughout, uh, throughout Europe. Yeah, they have an apartment near the running mall where they can... Uh, pitch their tent, so to speak, or sack out when they need to, and, and they can go train at the parks. Yeah, two terrific parks. We've already mentioned uh, Latenska, but uh, Stromovka is a much bigger country park, but that again is about a five minute jog from the apartments and from the uh, Prague Running Mall, the headquarters of the Prague Marathon and the Run Czech organization. Well, unless something drastic happens here, Jim, she's on the way to a, an absolutely terrific time here. So she's, I mean, she's off the chart, really. 14, 36, 28, 29, 12, 29, 12 pace. 
and that would be faster than the track 10,000 meters uh, world record that Al Mazayana set so memorably in Rio de Janeiro at the Olympic Games last year. Which was what, 27-14? In the teens, yep, 16. Well, I'm not sure if she can hold that, but it's still a good 5K time. <laughs> Absolutely sensational. And just to give you an idea, the women's 5K earlier, there were obviously some very good local runners in there, but uh, she's, she's run four minutes faster. Well, McConnell is back in the six, as you can see, and, but he's only seven seconds off the pace at the moment. But if these guys are really serious at the, uh, the moment, and uh, Bernard Kimeli certainly looks as if he is. Now, the youngster, the youngster in third place, Jim, there is really interesting. His manager told me earlier today, don't be surprised if you see him up there. He's 18 on Tuesday. So he's 17 years of age, and he's a training partner of Bernard Kimeli. Ah. Now, so... Uh, he's just following his... His, his name, a very unusual first name, Ronex, R-H-O-N-E-X, Kipruto. 17 years of age. He's run 28.37 for 10K at altitude. So that's got to be worth probably a minute. One of the uh, the fast 10Ks ever run at altitude. Trains in uh, in uh, E10. And as I said, his manager said, don't be surprised if you see him in the latter stages of the race. Well, it's just after halfway here. He's lying second at the moment be, uh, behind his training partner. He's got his eyes fixed on that run check vest in front of him. Well, what a turnout this would be. And what an absolutely sensational breakthrough for uh, Ronix Cabruto if he can keep this going. We talked earlier about uh, Abraham uh, Kipiotic, who was last year's winner, and he was saying he wasn't sure how he would be affected by training in Japan with the lack of altitude versus training in Eton, where he was at 2,400 meters, uh, and maybe it has affected him. Well, last May, he accepted an invitation to uh, join one of the famed corporate teams in Japan. And he's been training there for, well, since then, the last, uh, the last three months. And uh, there's another look at the uh, kilometer five in the window. A, a minute ahead. Good Lord. No. She was a minute ahead of, uh, yeah, of, of second place, I think. Well, Joycelyn is really going for it here. She already holds the uh, world best for 10K on the roads at uh, 30.04. She's currently operating some 50 seconds faster than that, which is uh, yeah, just as sensational, if not more so, than uh, the young Ronex uh, Kipruto in the men's race. Scary fast, really. Well, as Jim said, when you go out at a pace like that, you, all, you, you run the danger of blowing up in the later stages. Let's hope she can keep it together for another uh, 11 minutes or so. I believe Fancy Kumatai was uh, running second and uh, Viola third. I don't know if they're together or close together. Well, it is. Uh, it, it's obviously a downhill incline, as you can see, but she looks pretty good there as does this uh, trio, the, uh, the two Kimelis and the young 17-year-old Kip Kipruto. Just uh, three days shy of his 18th birthday. And he's taking it to, uh, to the Kimelis, isn't he? Matthew, Matthew's finding the pace a bit hard. They just passed 7K, incidentally, in, what, about 1903, 1904? 1903, yeah. Uh, well, so they're under 27.20 pace. They're... they're Running about 27.12 or so. Well, at the moment, we're on for two course records in this 22nd running of the Burel Prague Grand Prix. Possible world record on the women's side, which is what we had kind of hoped for. Not kind of hoped for. We, we hoped for it. You can, you can never be sure of things like this, but the no. way, the, the way no. that Jeb Gosko was talking yesterday, 
and uh, it, it's very rare that you you get a Kenyan saying beforehand that they're going to break a world record. She didn't say that, to be fair to her, but she did say she didn't see any reason why she couldn't run under 30 minutes, which, uh, of course, would be a world record by some half a dozen seconds. Well, the guys are really cutting it out now. They're going back to Malastranska and they're going back to the last hairpin before they come back to the bridge and that last just short of a kilometre into Republic Square and the finish. We can see people behind uh, Joyce Lynn, but it's hard to tell who they are, whether they're women, men. Well, at, at, at this pace, I'd, I'd happily say that's a bunch of guys who just can't <laughs> keep up with uh, Joyce and Jeff Costco. 7K, 20.45. 29.40. That you will not be surprised to hear is her manager, who is uh, <laughs> ye yelling her on there. What was the time? I, I, 29.40 would be... Uh, 20 sec 24 seconds. 20.40, rather. 20.40 would, would be, yeah, 29.40 page. It's just hard to wrap your mind around these numbers. Malik, Malik Caputo. I think Yana will be happy with this, the way these three guys are, are well, duking it out. She, you know. she should be, and you, you can't get much better publicity than having a 17-year-old. You're vying for a, a very fast victory with uh, two of his training partners. All these three guys are in the, uh, the run check team. And as you can see, uh, there's, there's still a lot of cobbles around in the, uh, in the streets of uh, Prague. Fortunately, not destroyed during the uh, Second World War. It's an architect's dream or a, a fan of uh, architecture's dream. Yeah, if you go up the road a little ways to Dresden, just across the river into uh, Germany, that was a city that was carpet bombed, fire bombed. Prague was luckily able to escape that. Matthew is not a member of Runcheck Racing, but uh, Bernard is, and uh, the youngster is. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be wrong, on that, but he's not wearing a, a run check racing vest. He's wearing an Adidas vest, of course, which Adidas does is not only a sponsor of the race, but a sponsor of many of these runners. I think it's one of their lighter, lighter weight uh, running vests. Anyway, whatever the case, this trio is well away. They're not going to be caught. Uh, you know, even, even if they fall off this pace, as you can see, there's, uh, there's a, probably 200 meters clear behind them. They're heading back towards the bridge. Well, that's a lot of kudos, the information on your screen. Every event in the Run Check series, all seven races, holds an IAAF gold label more than any other country in the world. Seven of them. Kind of hollering in the background there. Now the uh, the guys are uh, trying to upstage the youngster, their young training partner. But uh, Joycelyn Jebkoske, she's trying to upstage the world. Well, she's certainly on her way to uh, another world record if she keeps up this pace. She's about five minutes away from victory, and these guys much much less we're looking at uh, three minutes running for these guys now yep. and if they get to that turn into the bridge you know in uh, anything under 24 uh, well they've already uh, got to uh, they're going to be well under three minutes of course for the last uh, kilometer but it's going to be touch and go now that uh, that, that last um, bit of a gradient may have taken it out of them remember 27 28 it is an uphill coming back up there. 900 meters to run 
take your pick of the uh, Kimelis. They've dropped the uh, youngster Kipruta by the looks of it, but he's going to uh, return a fantastic time, uh, Ronex Kipruta. That's Bernard. Bernard, who is uh, leading the charge at the moment. But Matthew's still within striking distance. Well, he looks back anxiously. They probably know each other's uh, sprinting uh, worth. Ah, uh, here he comes. He's on his shoulder. Matthew, incidentally, is uh, he's only 19 himself, so he's, uh, he's barely uh, a year and uh, a bit older than Ronex, who's uh, running now about 20, 30 meters behind them. And that's the view up to one of the famous uh, Prague tunnels. And this is one of the reasons uh, for run check racing is to give some of these young guys an opportunity that they wouldn't have otherwise. Okay, we're in the last half of a kilometer now of the 22nd running of the uh, Birel Prague Grand Prix 10K. Yeah, choose your Kimeli. Matthew Bernard has a uh, meter over Matthew. Young Ronix Kibruto is about 20 meters back. It's going to be down to the finishing sprint. Who is going to be the stronger or the faster man? And there's Joyce Jessica, uh, Joyce Jeff Goske or Joyceline Jeff Goske. Now she too is what three minutes away from uh, from victory. Yes. She, she's looking a little more ragged, which is to be expected. Sure. Certainly. But these two are into their sprint, heading for the blue carpet. Once they get on that, they've only got a few. Dozen well, you, as you can see, tram lines, cobblestones. It's not easy. Bernard to the left. He's got the upper hand at the moment, but Matthew is gonna come through on the inside. There's Bernard the responds. The there the the they kick. go. Heading for that. And it looks, Whoa. oh, and Bernard stumbled. Young Ronix is just right almost behind. Muscle. It's a course record, folks. It is Indeed it is. 27.09 or 10. Bernard Camelli beats Matthew Camelli and immediately behind them, young <laughs> Ronux Kipruto. A triple header for the Run Czech racing team and another course record in the Burrell Prague Grand Prix 10K. And all that remains now is to see uh, A, how far behind the rest of the guys are and how close, in fact, Joycelyn Jeff Gosguy herself probably on the way to a world record, just as can Gogo. He looks like he's gonna be the uh, the next guy in. Fourth. Isaac Langat, Jamal the Ethiopian is in the mix there. All under 28 minutes. A crowd under 28. That's the Norwegian. Norwegian Zondre has won a terrific race. Super Got time. Got under 28, uh, 28 minutes. So let's uh, concentrate on Joycelyn Jepkos, guys. She's already set four world records here in Prague in the same race in the uh, Sportissimo Prague half marathon uh, back in April. Here she is being paced back towards the bridge and the last 900 meters into Republic Square on uh, what is, uh, we hope, is that, well, in fact, I'm sorry, she's already across she's the bridge. She's the in bridge. the, uh, she's in the finishing straight. So this is not just a course record being set here, which is being smashed here. This is Joycelyn Jebkoske. Catching some of the elite men. So how close can she get to uh, 29 minutes? It's going to be a pretty extraordinary time, what, uh, whatever the case. She's actually brought the uh, the road 10k time in line with the track 10,000 meters time. I think she's going to be just outside that. But look at her world record, 30:04. It looks as if she's going to smash that by well over 30 seconds. Heading for it. She'll be on that blue carpet in a moment. There she is. In fact, it's about a 20 second better time than she ran in April. Fantastic 40, 29, time. 43, 29, Abs 43. Absolutely wonderful. Absolutely. 
So a course record in the uh, men's race. Top three all under the previous record set three years ago by Joyce Lynn Jeb Koske, as we suspected <laughs> after a confident appearance both in the half marathon here in Prague uh, three months ago and at yesterday's press conference. Absolutely sensational run here tonight to decimate the course record. Viola is going to be uh, staying just ahead of uh, one of her uh, Kenyan uh, colleagues 20, by the 30, looks of 24, it. 30, 25, wow. 30, 25, 28. So a minute back. So in fact, Viola did the sort of time that she did last year to win the race. Yes, yes. And, and a 10K time that would win most 10Ks around the world. Oh, indeed. Race director Carlo Capalbo. Some more kudos for him and the organization. So world record for Joycelyn Djibkoske. Five world records in Prague in the last four months for this 24-year-old mother from Kenya, the five-year-old son. She's probably run faster than her husband ever ran at 10K now. And he was a very decent Kenyan runner, albeit not an international. Run faster than 99.9% .9 of the people in the world. <laughs> Now anything under 30 minutes for 10K on the roads is, uh, yeah, is a, a, a really good time for a man or woman. But Joyce in Jeff Costco has become the first and only woman to run sub 30 for 10K on the roads, breaking her own world record of 30.04. Some of the Czech runners coming in there. These guys are still running 33, 34 minutes. Well, under, under 33 for uh, for these two finishers. 32, 30. In the uh, in the popular race, and that's not to be sneezed at. Yeah, a bit more training, and those guys can uh, have pretensions towards running closer to 30 minutes. It's the Ethiopian woman, Belanesh. She was not of the caliber of the Kenyans today. 32.50 something. Here comes Eva. Rabkova. Eva Vrabkova, 33.08. In fact, she's very close to her personal best of 33.07. We'll see what the clock says at the end. Right. Maybe one second outside it. Said she wanted to beat that, and hopefully, this is the ex cross country steer, incidentally. Uh, let's hear it if we can from uh, race winner, Jocelyn Jepkowski. you are the first one to run under 30. So, how is it to be the first one in the history in whatever? Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, I thank God for making me to be the winner of today and to break the uh, world record. I'm very happy, I was very confident, uh, and I was hoping for the best uh, because of the training I did, I done, so I was very happy. Um, From the beginning, you were um, faster than the world record, so uh, it looked really easy from you. Yeah, it was not easy, very tough, yeah. Okay, thank you. What does it mean for you? Sorry? What does it mean for you uh, to be the first one under 30? It means a lot for me. Uh, I think I'm very proud of it. So I'm okay. Thank you very much and congratulations. Well, she's right, it's never easy. But, but she didn't a... die. I mean, she never really lost it. 
amazing. Well, she set out with the intent. She was 100 meters ahead after a, a kilometer or two and just went further and further away, won by a minute, absolutely decimated the world record that she set during a half marathon here in Prague three, three four months ago. Joycelyn Djebkoska of Kenya, 29.43, her fifth road world record of the year. She uh, had intended, or at least the race organizers had intended for the women to go out at three minute pace to try and break that record. There's the men's uh, result, 27.10. That's a course record by some 18 seconds. Bernard Camelli over Matthew Camelli. Ronix Cabruta, remember, only 18 years old. Next Tuesday has run 27.13. Absolutely sensational time. And this is no mean feat for any of these guys here on this page. Look at this, 28.46. These are still world-class times for these men. Beautiful view of the castle and the cathedral. Appreciative crowds cheering on some of the 9,000 competitors and finishers in this uh, Prague, Birel Prague Grand Prix 2017, 10 kilometers road race. We're just waiting for the official women's time. Now these guys are still under 40 minutes. It's a beautiful evening in Prague, so it's nice for the spectators, nice for the runners. It couldn't be much better, as we said earlier. It's probably still about 20 degrees uh, centigrade. That's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. A very pleasant evening. It's very still tonight. They're afraid, the organizers are afraid there might be some high winds to uh, affect those uh, record attempts. It was not to be and leading the, uh, the the fray and the field in all senses, Joycelyn Djebkoskaya of Kenya, 24 years of age, sets her fifth world record of the year, breaks her own 10K world record. There's the first uh, Czech runner, Jirzy Homolatz, the first Czech male, that is. We've already seen uh, Eva Vranskova uh, come in in uh, either equaling her personal best of uh, 33.07 or one second outside it, 33.08. And look at these guys, this is what, about uh, seven, eight kilometers, Jim? Yes. So they've, uh, they've still got quite a few minutes left to run. About 2K to go. But they're all moving well. It, it, you know, there's a lot of medical aid out on the course. There are four defibrillators along the course on bicycles. And uh, 10 aid stations, one for every kilometer. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be needed much tonight, which is good news. Very good news. Well, as we watch some of the 9,000 contestants in this uh, Burrell Prague Grand Prix 10K race, here in Prague this evening. That young woman, 24 years of age, from the Western Highlands of Kenya. She's a Nandi, uh, which is the same uh, tribe as uh, Bruce, perhaps the most famous of the uh, Kenyan runners, the man who started all, Kipchoge Kano, back in 1964 and 68. Olympic gold medalist, the, uh, the grandfather of, or the godfather of uh, Kenyan running, Joycelyn Jevkoske, who certainly emulated him in the world record stakes. 29.43 for 10K. And 27.10 for the men, 27.11, 27.13. Well, a reflective Joycelyn Jevkoske. Well, I'm sure she's tired. She said it was hard. You wouldn't really know it. A bit of sweat on her brow, nevertheless. And there's the mayor, or lady mayor, come to uh, say hello and congratulate her yet again. She handed her a, uh, a special award yesterday, which was a, uh, a photograph, or rather a, a book cover 
of the uh, the greatest uh, Czech runner in history. Mary, uh, Emil Jezebo, Muskeho závodu. Uh, Bernard, it was a great run with you and your brother at the end. So, how was brother. the end from your uh, point of view? Uh, the best Vegas was very good. At uh, four kilometers, was good, but uh, it's slow a bit. Uh, 5k, slow a bit. So, uh, Matthew, Matthew Kemele, boost, but uh, it's okay. What about the time? How are you satisfied with the time you did? Yeah, I was satisfied. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you very much. Well, that's interesting. Race winner Bernard Kimeli said that it was a bit too slow at 4 and 5k. And then Matthew finishing second uh, just behind him there. Uh, began to push the race, but he said that was okay by me because he obviously felt uh, comfortable. Ran out the race winner in a course record, 27-10. Matthew right behind and young Ronex Kipruto, 17 years of age, finished in third place. Now the men's event record was worth 2,000 euros to Bernard, so that's a nice little check for him to take home. Of course, uh, the world record was worth 20,000 euros. So no wonder she's smiling, huh? <laughs> <laughs> of course, she had, a, she had a big bonus in April, so she's had a good year. She can build a new house. And there it is, Joyce and Jeb Koska of Kenya, 29.43, a new world record by a substantial margin, 21 seconds off her former record. Fancy Chumatai in second, Viola Jeb Chumba now runs for Bahrain, albeit a uh, Kenyan until earlier this year. So that wraps it up for this 22nd edition of the Birel Prague Grand Prix, 10 kilometers. Uh, I'd like to thank my colleague, uh, Jim Mobley, for joining me this evening. So it's goodbye from me. As a full script. Just as a quick post postscript, we'll show you the award ceremony. There's Ronex, the 17, to about to be 18 year old. Matthew Camelli in second, 27-11, well under the old course record. And Bernard Camelli with a new course record of 27-10. Presented the award from Volkswagen, the giant key. They do not get the giant car, only the giant key. But Volkswagen is a, a long time, very important sponsor for the event and that gives them a chance to show off a bit. The medals from the mayor. Bernard looks quite happy, as he, as he well should be.
pohybem, když proběhl i pod bránou, za kterou Virel věnuje za každý průběh 5 korun. Now they receive the Bohemian Crystal trophies, which will be packed up so they can carry them back to Kenya in safety. Dámy a pánové, na počest vítěze za snímna. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the winner will be played. And the Kenyan national anthem. So it's a clean sweep for the Kenyans. Chance to take a couple of photos with trophies. Tam Tam Batucada, Brazilian drummers, helping the mass of runners finish. There's Joyce Lynn and her husband and coach as the top women move to the award stand. Viola Chepchumba, who is now running for Bahrain, Kenyan native, recently changed allegiance to Bahrain. Fancy Kemotai, finishing second in a big personal best of 30 minutes and six seconds. Deutschland, the new world record holder, 29.43, breaking her own world record by 21 seconds. Medals and flowers for the top women. And some more crystal. It's a lot to hold and try to 
after a long, hard race. Jocelyn Chepkoskai, 29-43 world record. And again, the Kenyan national anthem. World record. So that brings to a close, basically, our coverage from this very successful Burrell Prague Grand Prix 10K here in beautiful, in the beautiful city of Prague. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. And we'll see you next week in Usti nad Laban for the seventh and final race of the run check racing season, a half marathon, Usti nad Laban. Thank you and good evening.